there, boys and girls and children of all ages. Fat Bash, I want to be Buddha coming at you today. Basically, I'm going to do another little life vlog here. And the main discussion of the day's vlog is going to be about football. That's right. I'm the American gladiator sports of real men and tattooed ex-criminals. That, that, that's what, if you actually looked at the current NFL, that's what it looks like. But actually, if you look at a large portion of the society, it looks a lot of a bunch of 20 to 30 year old kids tatted all up like they just got out of prison because they have a mistaken understanding of what it means to be a man. But hey, looking dangerous is really cool. So anyway, what prompted this discussion the other day, I was trying to figure out when the Super Bowl uh, um, was because I was going to probably maybe take that Sunday off and burn some vacation time so I can go over to my uncle's house and watch the game. Do I have a great interest in, you know, the Seattle Super, um, Seattle Super, um, Seahawks versus the Broncos? No. I would probably be rooting for the Broncos because the only reason uh, um, is my grandmother loved the Broncos. And the truthfully, the, the weird thing about this relationship is the reason my grandmother loved the Denver Broncos is her little grandson did about six to almost a year in a little nice little hospital called Denver um, National Jewish Hospital in Denver, Colorado. So that got her, and that was around 1983, that uh, got her a nice interest because um, several of the people that played for the Broncos would come to the NJH and visit the um, staff, and I had um, nice memories of them, and I told them about, to my grandmother about them. And they, so my grandmother started following the Broncos. And then John Elway refused to go play for the Colts and got um, and, and ended up with the Broncos, and she, he became her favorite quarterback, sort of besides, you know, um, the, the man, the myth, the legend, Johnny Unitas, which is one of the greatest quarterbacks ever in her eyes. So that's, that's I'll probably be rooting for the Broncos. But what prompted this is I was listening to the radio, and I guess um, recently um, President Obama made a comment that if he was a um, if he had a son, would he allow him to him to play football? And his answer was no, which for some reason got the callers and uh, the 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 co-hosts and all up in a tizzy about the feminization of America, the the, the wussification of America, that that you know the, the the football is going to be destroyed because they don't want people to play football. They want won't want the kids to play football. Well, some some personal backstory here, real quick. As a young kid, I was an abnormally little small child. I was a runt, and I was a runt for a long period of time. Um, I truthfully, if you see me in the third or fourth grade, you would swear I just got out of the hospital. I was really under, um, abnormally sized for my, uh, um, my, my age and extremely skinny. And the truth is, I just did get out of the hospital. I spent most of my childhood in hospitals with basically... I didn't have an immune system and severe bronchial asthma and a slight little genetic defect in my lungs, which made my early childhood one of um, continual hospital visits and a constant state of rage. One of the things I used to treat um, my condition with, uh, especially bronchial asthma in the early 70s, was massive doses of steroids coupled with a drug called theophylline. And for a long period of time, about seven years, I was on somewhere between 70, 60 to 70 to 120 milligrams of prednisone, deltazone, or cortisone on some variant of, of a steroid, which made me slightly chubby, which was really good for me because I finally started growing a little bit and I got a little chubby and all that little rage issues that I had pinned upside, I could take out on other people by beating them up and engaging in the great American sport called football. And I got really big really fast and how big and how fast is by the time I was 14 15 years old I was six foot two 310 pounds and could bench more than anybody in the high school and even though I had basically quit school and was a shut-in and refused to go to school or refused to get out of the house the high school football coach even though he was he had, had a child here that was severely emotionally distressed and suicidal. <laughs> he would come in every every Friday, every Saturday and Sunday. He would come and visit my mother and visit me and beg me to go play football. Now you might say that he was hopefully just trying to get me to engage in the community in some manner, hopefully pull me out of my shell or anything. But I don't buy that. He basically seen a six foot two, six foot three individual 
um, who could bench a massive amount of weight and could actually run pretty fast. And I was a pretty good pulling guard. And I actually preferred playing de uh, defensive end, but they wouldn't let me play defensive end, which may maybe spoiled me on the sport forever. <laughs> Sitting there and taking hits over and over and over and over again and not being able to control the means of engagement really didn't suit well for me and my, my, my political organizations, organizational skills. So, and what's funny is my, mother, my grandmother and me played football. She, she would throw the football up until I it was 14, 15 years old. She was in her 60s still throwing her football with me. My mother taught me how to tackle. My mother taught me how to block. My mother had taught me how to protect myself against ch um, chop blocking. My mother taught me how to chop block. My mother taught me how to hold and not get caught. You know, which which is sort of ironic. So I got a, a long history with football. And it was probably at, at a period of time for me, I seen it as a way of maybe getting out of being a poor white boy in the rural south. Because, hey, I even talked to Danny Ford, who was the coach of Clemson at the time, and I was pretty good. And maybe I could have went to Clemson, and I was hoping maybe to go to Notre Dame or Columbia or Stanford because, hey, I wanted an education. I knew I wasn't going to play in the NFL. There was absolutely no way to that. But maybe I could milk it for a scholarship. So that's the thing about football and all violent sports throughout history. There are means for the upper class – to engage in spectator, spectator death sports vicariously and reaffirm their manhood by having the poor fight amongst themselves. That's my little political agenda about against football. But truthfully, if I had a kid, I wouldn't let him play football. I, I wouldn't let him play football. And the reason for this is twofold. I broke my legs. I dislocated my shoulders. I can't really raise my shoulders above my head currently. I broke my arms in several different places. Um, I didn't ruin my hands. I ruined my hands fighting um, by shattering them up really bad. But I did a lot of physical damage to myself playing football. I was very fortunate that I don't think I suffered any long-term concussions, but I did have my bell rang on more than one occasion. And... My my little brothers who played football, both of them got crippled out of it. Both of them are in their pushing their thirties right now, and they did severe damage to themselves. The um the only thing is probably only one of them th thinks it's a poor life decision. The other one regrets that he didn't. You know he hurt himself really early and he couldn't really prove himself in football, which is sort of sad. So I wouldn't let my child play football. For, for th that reason, because I physically do not want him, especially on psychologically, emotionally, early in life, getting damn hits to the head and your brain development. Brain doesn't stop developing fully until around 25, so you don't want it to take any damage if you can help it. So, yeah, if he gets old enough and he's outside of my house, they can play football. But under my roof, no, I wouldn't let you play football. And the second reason is I don't like the culture. That's right. Football is about violence, and it's about rage, and it probably is about some secret daddy issues that people don't talk about, but that's what it's about, and anybody who, who says it is, it hasn't spent any time in the locker room, hasn't spent any time playing bull in the ring, they just haven't done it, the reason I was good at football for a period of time is I had a lot of hate, I had a lot of rage, and I liked hurting people. And I was obsessively compulsively based. And I was hyper competitive. And this this sport nurtures these qualities. And I don't think they're good qualities to have as an individual. They just aren't. So I wouldn't play football now. I, I wouldn't let my kid play football. Um, and long term, I, I, I do think the sport should go away just like all violent sports should go away because they are nothing more than the the, the landed gentry watch, watch, watching the slaves fight. That, that's what it's about. It's what it's always been about. You know, vicarious manhood, thrill-seeking for, for, for a pampered society that, that gets it rocks off by seeing other people hurt themselves. It's a sadistic 
vile engagement. And I know that upsets a lot of people. But that's my thoughts on football. It's not for me. And do I think it's going away? Probably not because the society that embraces this sport is a sick society. And it, it truly is. Anyway, this is a fat basher wannabe Buddha. Probably ticked off almost everybody who watches this video. Hey, that's okay. I like doing that. Have a good day.